All right, we are back. It's no apologies. And um, let's just jump right in. Okay, sounds good. Biden's uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. We've covered this on two previous segments. On each of those segments, I went through the crazy line items. I went through 60 and then another 60 that are, I forget, 381, I think right. is what I said. Crazy, crazy stuff in there. Horrible, horrible spending. Um, I'm getting a little bit of pushback, though. Oh. Yep. Some people are saying that this was the right vote, um, and I will explain more on that uh, in, in just a second. Let's just show this next uh, graphic here. This is from the WhiteHouse.gov. So Joe Biden administration is very, very happy about this. And uh, so he's got the whole building a better America, build.gov, delivering results from President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law. Mm. It's not a bill, I keep saying a bill, but because of the 19 Republican senators, it is a law. And if you look at the very bottom, just the starting off, President Biden forged consensus and compromise between Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Wait a minute. So this is, I, I just want to start off by saying, uh, number one, this is a big win. For him. For President Biden. It's a, it has been, and, and you know, this passed months ago. Um, but it's a, it's a tremendous big win for him, no doubt about it. Um, however, there are very significant problems with this. Pull up the next story. This is from the Heritage Foundation. I mean, this is one of, of many stories that tell about the true aspect of the infrastructure bill. Uh, and they say it very nicely and succinctly. They say the infrastructure bill is neither reasonable nor centrist, because that's what we keep hearing. Uh, and what we're finding is just exactly what I've been showing, tremendous amount of pork, a tremendous amount of waste, uh, there is only a small portion of the bill which actually goes to true infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what we hear, is that, hey, listen, this was important, infrastructure is important, roads and bridges are important. Right. That's what we hear. Uh, what we find is that $110 billion is for roads and bridges. Out of the whole right. thing. Now, there's some previous spending that was authorized that also goes to that, but of the new spending, $110 billion goes to roads and bridges. Um, only 36 billion of that is is for actually for the bridges. Oh wow! How More, about for like broadband and things like that? Well, is that th where? there's that too, but okay. I do want to make a point that the green energy subsidies. Right is more, the amount for green energy subsidies is more than the amount for roads and bridges together. So this yes. infrastructure bill is a lot more about climate change, green energy and climate change, environmentalism, than it is about infrastructure. Got it. You asked about, about broadband. They, they consider when they say, oh, this much was spent for on infrastructure, anything spent for broadband is included in the category of infrastructure. Now we can argue, is it or isn't it? A good portion of what they say is going to be spent on broadband mm -hmm. isn't actually anything constructing broadband. It is to subsidize people's households at $30 a month for broadband internet. Um, also to get broadband internet to prisons because it's important that prisoners have the highest and best uh, cable uh, television. Oh, come on. And <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't be cable, would it? At any rate. <clears throat> So what we have here end. is uh, just a complete hack job on everything that you would never, ever want government to do. Okay. It's huge government overreach. It's huge. The subsidies are crazy. So there's, there's this aspect that it is for infrastructure. That's a tiny part. And like so many things that uh, poor legislation does, it's got a little tiny bit of a good nugget that's completely surrounded by a whole bunch of crap. And that does not mean you should pass it because it's got a tiny nugget of something good in there. Right. Um, the other thing is that what, what's said about it is that, well, gee, only $550 billion of it is new spending. Right. That's what we hear. That's what we've heard even in North Dakota. And that part is true. But what, what they're saying is that there, were, there was, um, let's see, 200, I forget here, $256 billion was spending that was appropriated during the co for the COVID-19 crisis, but wasn't spent. Ah. And so they're saying, look, we have this money, it wasn't spent. It so was if already we spend, appropriated. If we spend words, this, right? then we're not going further into debt or anything like that. Understood. Except you could just not spend it. 
the fact that you said you were going to spend it and there's a bunch left over, and so you're going to move that over, you're not going to count that as part of the cost of your new law is nuts. And then they also have a part where they, they call them offsets. So by making federal govern, government a little bit more efficient here or there, they say, well, this money that we're going to save by being more efficient, we're also going to apply to this. And so that isn't costing us anything, except you should be doing that anyway. And that is money that should be spent to maybe pay down our debt, for example. Why is that never an option? It's, it's Why is it never an option that if you have that money appropriated, you don't have to spend it? I don't I, get that. I know. I just, I just want to know if they actually believe this stuff that they're saying. I don't, it, it would never fly at home. That's what your I was just thinking. Your spouse would just say, what the hell that. is wrong with you? Right? I was just thinking about, you know, your own personal budget. And if you have this windfall, you don't have to spend it. You can save it or use it, you know, down the line maybe. But, right. but why, why instantaneously it's, does it have to go out the door? It makes no sense. I don't get Absolutely it. Absolutely no sense. Okay. All right. But here's the, here's the number one reason that, that people are giving me a little bit of pushback. And they're saying, listen, as much as you don't like it, Despite the fact that this is putting us further into debt, uh, $256 billion it adds to the deficit. Wow. And that's because they're not counting what they already had appropriated that's adding to the deficit. Sure. So, hey guys, it's only $256 billion more into debt. Hey guys, we know it was a big win for the Biden administration. Hey guys, we know that it's going to cause inflation to be worse down the road. But all of that was worth it because it prevented the Build Back Better bill, which is a much worse bill, I agree, from being passed. Except that is what we're being told, and there's no substance to that. That is a red herring. What we are being told is that they're playing chess. Okay. okay. However, Cinema, who is one of the two that was not going to vote for Build Back Better, she has a history of not voting for tax increases. In the Build Back Better bill, Tax increases were a part of that. Cinema was not going to vote for it anyway. Her colleagues have said off the record that those two bills were completely separate for her. Voting on one did not have anything to do with voting on the other. So this, this, is, this is just something to say. It's an excuse, basically. Got it. And it doesn't fly. And let's pull up our next uh, picture here. There is, and I'll, I'll explain why I'm showing this. Uh, we have Kelly Armstrong, who is our state representative. Or, or I'm sorry, the, the con congressional representative for the state at is large. how I mean to say it, at large. Now, the Conservative Review has a Liberty Score, and let's just read there. It says, Conservative Review's Liberty Score grades members of Congress on the top 50 votes over a rolling six-year term. A letter grade is assigned to each member to help you quickly determine whether a lawmaker is supporting conservative principles. The Liberty Score helps evaluate your representatives and senators, providing the tools necessary to separate rhetoric from reality. We don't expect any elected officials to be perfect, but we do expect them to keep their promises. I think that's really well said. I think everyone would agree with that, that that is a laudable goal. We see that Kelly Armstrong has a B, an 81%. And you see in the little circle there, the blue, that's conservative votes. The black is liberal votes. I think Kelly's doing pretty good. Uh, he should be applauded. And 81%, I think, is, is very, very good. We move on now to our senator, Kevin Kramer. Uh, he has a, pull it up here, he has a, not as good as Kelly, he has a 60%, a D. Now, I think Kevin can do a lot better than that. And I think some of that has been because he has been voting in favor of more spending lately. And I would, I, I believe in his heart, uh, he knows the right thing to do. He just needs to stop voting yes on spending bills. So he's got a, a D rating. Now, uh, go ahead and bring up our next one. Uh, this is our other senator, John Hoven. Uh, he has a liberty score, a conservative score, of F. He is graded with an F, 48%. Now, what I want to do is provide the common thread. There were 19 Republican senators that crossed over to vote with the Democrats, despite the other 31 Republican senators not wanting them to do that. They crossed over and allowed this to become law. What is the common thread for these senators that crossed over? There, are, there were 19 of them. Uh, 15 of the 19 have an F rating for their Liberty score. Three have a D rating, one has a B rating. You've got 
Mitch McConnell, F. Roy Blunt, F. Richard Burr, F. Bill Cassidy, F. Shelley Capito, F. Susan Collins, F. Lindsey Graham, F. Chuck Grassley, F. Lisa Murkowski, F. Rob Portman, F. Mitt Romney, F. Dan Sullivan, F. Tom Tillis, F. Roger Wicker, F. There's a common thread here. We're being told that these guys are playing political chess, when in fact, it is nothing more than big spenders throwing America under the bus. That's what we have with the Biden bipartisan infrastructure bill. Thank you very much.